I'm going to delete the faculty ID and the location ID and some of these other things. Then I'm going to rearrange it so it's first name, middle initial, last name. All right. Now if we go and run this, we will see Oh, I forgot to copy the images over. And there we go, back with the image. what we have here. Let's add to this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to describe what we want to add and then we'll take a couple minutes to think through it. I'll let you think through it on your own because you should be able to solve this based on what we've known. We've, we, there's no new tricks up my sleeve on this one. All right. Let's say I want to, and again, Refresh your memory on the tables. We have a faculty table. That has the FID, FF name, FL name, and so on. We have the student table that has a student ID as a primary key, student first name, student last name, some other fields, and it has a foreign key for faculty ID. All right. We have our page, details.aspx. And we're getting the ID of the faculty person. We have on our page right now a details view displaying the details of the faculty people. We want to display a list of the students that that faculty member advises. What do we need to add to that page to do that? Let's think that through. What objects do we need to add to that page to do this? Take a minute to think through it. What do we need to add? Details view. Again. Details view? A grid view. A grid view. A grid view is probably better because a grid view is geared to show more than one. So since this is a list of students as opposed to a single student, then we're better off adding a grid view. So, yeah, we'll have a grid view on here. Exactly. And a SQL statement to go get them. Now, what object do we're gonna, are we going to create to put our SQL statement in? Where do our SQL statements live? SQL data source. So, essentially, one thing that you should do, all right, uh, one common mistake that I see students make is they think that they can put everything in one data source. In other words, they would think that, gee, maybe I can alter the, because right now we have a, a detailed view and we have a data source <coughs> for this guy. A lot of times students think I'm going to make one gigantic data source that has everything I need on the page and everything is going to be bound to that. That's not the case. Think in, in chunks and pieces.
components, nuggets, however you want to put it. All right? Here we have the information about the faculty. That's sort of one self-contained thing. All the information about the faculty. Here's a list of students. Conceptually, that's two different pieces of data. They're related, to be sure, but we have faculty information, list of students information. There's no value in trying to create a SQL statement that's going to combine all that and give me that. That will only complicate matters. For one thing, there's only one of these, right? And there's potentially many of these. So right off the word go, by definition, you can see those are different SQL statements. Because this really only needs one, this needs many. All right, so you create, then, a data source for that, a data source for that. All right, because they're different pieces of data. There's a different number of rows and so on. What will our SQL statement look like for this list of students? Well, let's say we only want to display their first name and last name. And we'll throw an ID for good measure, because it's always a good idea to have the ID, right? So we'll say select SID, SF name, SL name from student. What else do we need on that SQL statement? Okay, both folks said it correct. One, one student said we need a where clause to say which students we want. And another student said we, we need an order by to put them in the proper sequence. So those are both good things to add to this, so let's add them one at a time. Now again, the sequence is the where clause would come before the order by, so let's do that first. So how are we going to select these students? I, th I think you mentioned it. I don't remember. The FID equals We're faculty, faculty FID. Or FID equals the faculty ID that we're interested in. Where are we going to get that faculty ID that we're interested in? Faculty or from the student, from the faculty. Don't, don't they have to be the same? Don't, doesn't it have to be where faculty FID equals student FID? OK. Yeah, you're, you're, what you're saying is true. Oh, great, can't get all of that on the same page. Or no, we, we, we do. All right. But this select statement doesn't have a faculty table in it. Doesn't need the faculty table in it. Doesn't need it. Pardon me? You said it doesn't need it. No, I, I asked, does it need it? Well, just the faculty FID. Well, then it would need the faculty table if it needs the faculty ID. I assume so. All right. Actually, it doesn't need the faculty table. What does it need? In other words, let's say you wanted to see all of my students, and my faculty ID was 27. All right. What would it need? It would need the value 27, right? So in other words, if my faculty ID was 27 and you want to see all my students, the statement would be where faculty ID equals 27. All right. So that's what it needs. It doesn't need the faculty table. It needs the value of the faculty ID that you want to pull the students for. So, hard-coded, to pull up me, would be 27. Well, we know we don't always want to see my students. We want to see any students. So, what will this become in our SQL statement? A parameter. Well, a question mark in this case. All right. Depending on the context, in a SQL statement, you use a question mark for the parameter. In those other columns, you use a curly bracket zero. So, we're going to say where FID equals question mark. Now, where are we going to fill in that question mark from? Where do we get the faculty ID that we want? Well, the foreign key. Well, the foreign key.
he won't tell me that I want faculty ID at 27. All right? Yes? From the link you generated? From the link I generated, or put differently, from the query string. We're already using the query string to pull up this detail information about the faculty. So this page knows the faculty ID that I want, right? How does it know the faculty ID that I want? It knows it because when we constructed the link, we included it as part of the query string. So we use the query string to pull up the details on this faculty, right? Because our select statement for this is something like select star from faculty where FID equals question mark. Where do we get that question mark from? We get it from the query string. Well, we need the same value of the FID to pull up the students. So I need to say select whatever from student where FID equals question mark. So what I can do is I can go and do that. Now again, this is what I mean about designing this, you know. Um, taking a second, and, and again, I'm not talking about doing something elaborate, you know. I've been talking and explaining and going on tangents, and it still only took five or ten minutes, right? So it's not like I'm telling you, gee, you know, spend hours scrutinizing and planning. No, spend a few minutes to think of what objects do I need to get this job done. What's my SQL statement going to look like? Where am I going to get the parameters from? So anytime you have a task to do, at least think in those terms, all right, so that you can piece these things together. Remember, your job as a programmer is a lot different than it was in the old days with the punch cards, right? You're not necessarily doing every single thing, every single minute detail, because there's, you've been provided a framework, all right? And that framework consists of a set of components that you can configure that does a lot of your job for you, all right? Not all of your job, but a lot of your job. And what's good about that, there's a, tons of things that are good about that. We talked about them throughout the semester. But you still have the responsibility for setting up and defining and configuring and choosing the proper components. So let's go in and let's actually go in and complete this part of it. <clears throat> really, now, doing this part should be a piece of cake, right? Because we've already thought for, through, we know what we need, you know, we, we've done these a few times, so we should have a pretty good idea of how to create the things that we need. All right? We just have, it's just a matter of going and doing it. So, we'll go and we'll add to this page a grid view. All right? That's part of it. I'll format it for good measure. I'll then go in and create my SQL data source and I'll configure it. Now, should I create a new connection string? No, no because we already have one. Let's use it. All right, specify the custom SQL statement. I'm essentially typing in exactly what I had before. Select SID, SF name, SL name from student where FID equals some parameter. All right. Where are we getting that parameter from? We're getting it from the query string. And what are we calling it on the query string? We're calling it ID. Let's go and test this by putting in some values. 
All right. Person has a faculty ID of two, has two students that they advise. We should, by the way, go back in the database and make sure that that's correct. I'm assuming that that's correct and my eyes aren't playing tricks on me and I didn't code something in wrong or whatever. But really, you shouldn't take his word for it that, yeah, that person has, a, has two advisees. You should go and verify that. All right, so let's go and finish. Let's bind these two things together. All right. I'm not going to edit the headings, although that would be a good idea to do so. Okay. Can you bound SQL data source 2 to DB SQL data source 1? No. No, I, I bound the details view, oh, I'm sorry, I bound the grid view for the students to the data source 2. Okay, I'm sorry. Yeah. You, don't, you don't bind data sources together. You bind a data source to a visual control. All right? In other words, I have a grid view. What is supplying the data for that grid view? This data source. I have a details view. What is supplying the data for this details view? This data source. What sort of links these together, uh, which might be sort of what you're thinking of as these two data sources are related, what links them together is the fact that both of them use the faculty ID to pull up their data. The first data source uses the faculty ID on the query string to pull up the, um, the, the data from the faculty table. The student one uses the faculty ID to pull up all the students that that person advises if that makes sense. Thanks. So. Okay. So now let's go and look at it. All right, Brown doesn't have any advisees. Blanchard, that's the guy that has the two advisees. We see underneath that the list of advisees that they have. Questions on that? One more thing I want to do today. All right, I want to go in and I want to write uh, a different sort of uh, search functionality. In other words, in the first search functionality, all right, um, I selected or I typed in a name, all right, and it showed me um, all the faculty members that, that had that name, all right. I'm going to do a slightly different look up here that's also going to tie together the faculty and the students. All right. I hope this isn't confusing because don't link these two examples together. These two examples are separate, separate thoughts, separate examples. When we 
select, let's see all the details of that faculty person. So this will be a drop down that will show all the faculty members. All right. When we have selected the faculty member, it will show the details for that faculty member. All right. And then it will also show the details of the student that that faculty member advises. And this will be a list. By the way, a lot of times this is called a header detail because you have sort of the parent table, faculty, and the child table, a list of the ones that belong to it that are related to it. So essentially you're taking and you're displaying on one page a one-to-many relationship. The parent data and then all the rows that belong to that parent. All right? So this is what we want to do. Instead of a text box, we want a drop down where we can pick a certain faculty person. All right? When we pick that faculty person, we want to display the details for that faculty person, and we also want to display the list of students. Let's think through <clears throat> well, the, the, the GUI part of it, the visual part of it, should be straightforward, right? We have a drop-down. We have a details view. And we have a grid view. Now, the question is, is how many data sources do we need? And then the question after that will be, what will the SQL statement for those data sources be? Three. We have three. All right. What are your three data sources? Uh, one for the drop-down, the details, and one for the grid Okay. One for the drop-down, one for the details view, and one for the grid view. All right. That, by the way, is correct. All right. So I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I, I don't want to, like, you know, make you think I'm grilling you, like, why did you say that? All right. Why? Both of these are from the faculty table. All right. Why do you need two data sources? Why not just have one data source, given that both are from the faculty table? Anyone help them out? Is it because you have three different visual controls? Kind of, but don't, you can't always count on that. Because you could have two visual controls that shared the same, that shared the same data source. Here's a reason. Let's think about what's going to be contained in each of these. All right? This is going to contain a list of all faculty members, right? List of all faculty members. What's this one going to contain? The one selected faculty member. So that's two different things. Right? There is going to be a list of all the faculty members, and then there's going to be the one that we selected. Now, how do we know which one to select? It'll be based on the value of this dropdown. The value of that dropdown is going to be the FID that we want to select here by. It will also be the FID that we want to select these students by. So, I'm not going to write out the full select statement, but for this guy, the select statement will be something like select star from faculty. The select statement for this guy will be something like select star from faculty where FID equals our parameter. And this one will be something like select star from student where FID equals the value in the drop down. So 
Again, we've thought this through. Might not be a piece of cake, but we're in good position that, that, you know, it's pretty straightforward what we need to do. So if you can understand and you can think through and choose the components that you need to create, creating them is relatively the easy part. The tougher part is looking at this and understanding why you need three data sources, all right? Not necessarily why you need three visual controls. That should be pretty obvious, but the three data sources. So let's go and let's build this example. So I'm going to go and I'm going to create a new page. And I'm going to call it faculty list or faculty select. I don't know. As good as any. I'm going to make this my start page. That's kind of cool to do, uh, kind of sp speeds up the development. That way you don't have to navigate to that page each time. So when I'm debugging, I almost always set whatever page I'm currently working on as the default page or the start page. I'm going to go into design. I'm going to grab a drop down. All right, I'm going to grab a details view. And I'm going to grab a grid view. Now, again, in the spirit of doing one piece at a time, I'm going to do one data source at a time, get that working, and then we'll go on to the next one. All right. So the first one that we could have is we could have our drop down to display um, something for the user to see and then the value. Remember, a drop-down always is going to have the visual part that the user sees, and it will have the value that is the value of the individual options that's behind it. What would we want the users to see in this case? First or last name. Yeah, probably the faculty. Actually, and, and we'll, we'll get to this in, in a second, but what we probably would want to see their first name and last name, just in case there were two Professor Smiths. All right? So... Uh, we, we could even expand it to include the department, just in case there were two John Smiths, you know, or something very common. But for now, we'll settle for showing the first name and last name. Our very first iteration will just show the last name. So that's what we're going to show the user is the last name. What's sort of going to be the value behind the scenes? Yeah, the, the primary key. Typically, that's the way it is. What, what, what gets displayed to the user is whatever's going to be understandable to the user the name or the description or something like that. What's going to be behind the scenes is going to be the primary key. That's why, by the way, it's so good to have single part primary keys. All right? Um, because, again, if, there, if it happened to be that the faculty ID was a, was a two-part key, this would be really complicated to do. It would be a real pain to do. So it's definitely to your advantage uh, especially in web applications, to keep things to single part keys. So let's go in and let's configure this data source. And now creating a new connection, I'll simply connect to that. I'm going to specify my select FID, FL name from faculty, and I probably want to order by 